everyone, I'm Lauren Berggren. Uh, we're gonna get started with the photo platform session with Bob today. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Lauren. Um, thanks again to everybody who's uh, come here and all the uh, run sign up folks for uh, doing, putting all these great presentations together and demonstrations together. It's really, it's really, um, it's fun to see. It's fun to have like this sort of thing where everybody comes together. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go through a bunch of different like um, example photos, photo albums and stuff like that from different websites. And I'll try to show different features. And then uh, and I'll just show kind of the front end of it first. And then uh, a little bit later on, I'll show the back end of the photo platform. And we'll go through kind of the detailed features and how to use it and how to upload photos. And then um, Phil and Ryan have actually put up on a test server for me um, the photo uh, album capability for um, nonprofit ticket events. It's not available publicly yet, but it's um, but it's uh, it's worth uh, worth taking a look. So I'm going to use the, the Scott Coffee race. This is the race that actually was the inspiration for starting Run Sign Up. Um, it's local here in Morristown, New Jersey. And uh, so I'm going to use 2017 so I don't screw anything up that's current and things like that. But in photo albums, what's great is that you can actually put up photos from multiple years of events. And so even if you're like new to run sign up, you can actually create events from past years and upload photos as well as results for each of those years, which is, which is pretty nice. So, um, uh, one of the nice features that we have is that you can organize things into albums. And so in this one, we've got a start line and a finish line. And then we had uh, a friend of the race, Frank, who, uh, who actually uh, uh, came and shot photos and gave them to me. So I, I put those under a separate album of uh, uh, photos for, for, uh, from Frank. Um, and you can create however many albums you want to and arrange them however you want to. If I go in here and I look at photos, it kind of gives me a nice, you know, kind of collage type of look. Um, I can click into these and kind of just zip through them really quickly. It's, uh, it's, it's a super fast type of platform. One of the things we did several months ago is we re-architected all the internals of it. And it's, it's, uh, it's a very robust and scalable platform. Um, and Currently, we host you know uh, somewhere between five and ten million photos, and now it's built to be able to handle hundreds of millions of photos. One of the uh, cool things that uh, you can do here is that as you're hovering over one, you can actually download the photo, and it's downloaded in the original size. We recommend five megabyte photos to be uploaded because more than that, most screens can't really resolve them anyway but we will handle up to 25 megabyte files. Um, and what happens when a photo gets uploaded is we actually fire off a whole bunch of other things and we uh, create sizes that are optimized for different views. So like we create one that's optimized for here so that you don't have to download the whole big five megabyte file to display on a, on a page like this and it, it gets optimized. Um, but when you hit download, you, you will get the original download. Um, you can share it on Facebook really easily, and it creates this uh, nice little uh, custom uh, view of it. It includes the photo, and it shows, shows where it's from, and it kind of encourages other people to kind of join the race and, and things like that. Um, we have a new photo that is just out in the past couple, a, a new feature that's just out in the past couple days, which is reporting a photo. So if I report this uh, photo of a truck uh, in the middle of this thing, um, it allows for crowdsourcing of uh, flag photos. So now you don't see Paul Canton's truck there anymore. And on the back end, uh, I'll show you a little bit later on how we have a mechanism to uh, allow race directors to approve those or to deny them. If I go back to this kind of home page for photos, uh, it also has this search bar here in it. And um, I used to help coach the, the Morristown cross country team. So I know one of the former runners for the cross country teams, Kyle Siegel. So if I start uh, typing, you know, uh, 
a letter in here, it, it gives me all the matches, right? So I'll type in Kyle and I'll search for him. And it brings up all the photos of Kyle. And again, it brings, brings him up in this type of manner. Um, the other thing that we do is we kind of sync time. So if you've got a finisher type of uh, setting, you can have the finish line uh, kind of aligned with the time of finish. And then it shows the people that are kind of near that uh, individual. So it, if it doesn't pick up the bib, it will pick it up from a time-based perspective. And the reason why we are able to recognize Kyle is not from facial recognition. We don't do facial recognition. We never did. We never will um, because there's too much legal morass in that. Uh, and we want to protect uh, race directors as well as ourselves. What it does is it, it actually recognized his bid number. So what happens, like I said, when a photographer or a participant uploads the photos, we actually do a number of things. So one was we optimize the size of the photos. A second thing that we do is we actually send it today over to Google Photo. To Google Photo, it's not photo. It's a it's like an optical character re, uh, recognition service that they do, and then it looks for all all the numbers, and then it sends us back the numbers that are associated with each picture, and then we tag them. And I'll show a demo of this later. It's, it's pretty amazing. We're in the process of upgrading in, in about three or four weeks time, we're gonna replace the Google uh, image recognition with something from a, a third party called Tagly um, that is optimized for recognizing um, uh, bibs, runner bibs, um, which we're hoping, because if you, if you upload uh, photos today, it, it's maybe 70, 80%, depending on the quality of the, uh, of the image, as well as like the clarity of the, of the bib type. Um, uh, like this is a very clear bib. So it, it, it works out pretty nicely um, for that. Um, let me show you something else. So because we know the bib number and results is based upon bib number, we can match those things together. So I'm back here in my 2017 results. And it so happens that our CTO, Steven Sigbert, is semi-fast. Uh, and he also lives semi-close. So he always shows up at the Scott Coffee Race and um, is a useful guinea pig. Um, so if we click on his, uh, on his uh, name, it brings up his individual results, which has really nice uh, images. But it also finds all of the pictures of Steven. And th this, this kind of blows my mind in a lot of ways because like, look at this picture here. It picked up that 1248 and it recognized that it was him, right? And it recognized all these other guys here too, you know? Um, so it's, it's pretty uh, amazing what happens just kind of automatically. You just upload your photos and, and that's, that's, that's what happens. Um, let me go to a different race. Um, I just uh, kind of did a search on our back end and looked for races that had recently done uploads. And I stumbled upon this one. And I just thought that the imagery was really cool. Um, so here, they, they actually have a photographer at different places along this trail run. And like, um, like you look at this cabin uh, feature here, you know, just the, the images are really, are really pretty, you know. And so it allows runners to go back in and, 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 and get a, a great picture of themselves and, and so forth. And, you know, they're able to easily, uh, uh, you know, search for themselves by bib number or name. So if I, if I click on that one, you know, oh, here's a, here's a bunch of pictures of, of Jody, whoever she may be. Um, so I, I think that that's pretty cool. But one of the other features of our platform is we actually keep track of how many photos there are in each album and how many views there are. And so what, what this race had, um, they had a total of 1,100 photos that they uploaded and 9,000 views of those photos. So like nine, nine views per, per photo. And you know it shows like the number of views per, uh, per each album. So this is the back end where you're looking at each of the albums and you can do some different things back here that I'll show you in a little bit. 
but um, but it shows you how many views for each of the albums, which is which is uh, pretty nice. Um, it's also nice from an advertiser perspective because um, sometimes the uh, the photos are watermarked uh, with the sponsor logo, and so you can um, you can show this to your sponsors to say, hey, you know, look, you had nine thousand views of your of your logo. Um, we also have uh, team photos is kind of automatically put into, into the platform. So if your uh, event is set up with teams, then we know who's on a team. And then if you look at a team page, this is an example team page here, a result team page, um, uh, which looks really nice, Avery, good job. Um, uh, you see the team members and so forth down here and how much time they did and so forth. This is from uh, a challenge event that uh, Jeff Galloway is running. He's a famous uh, old runner and coach um, back in my time. But it automatically says, oh, did any of these people uh, have photos? And in this one, it's, it's actually showing the participant photo upload capability, right? So Margaret really has an eye for photos. Um, look at these photos, they're really pretty. So she's sharing her experience, um, you know, from uh, doing this virtual challenge and it's a way for people to kind of connect with each other and, and so forth. And so Margaret can upload, I can see this because I'm an admin, but Margaret can upload more photos at any point in time. She can upload however many photos she wants to and, and obviously share them out or download them. And she can keep it as her, her kind of storage file, if you will, uh, for things. Um, I, I love this race. It, it happened uh, uh, last year, a million miles for justice. And, um, and they accumulated, I think they got up to like 300,000 miles total. So they didn't quite make their uh, million, but um, it was pretty impressive how many people participated in it. And, um, and so you just see the, like the types of photos that people are uploading. It's just, it's so, it's so random and weird and wonderful. You know, it's just like, you know, there's waterfalls and cats and, you know, little Strava printouts and people writing on their own photos and stuff like that. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to, to see people kind of take advantage of this platform. Um, this, this sort of stuff really makes me happy because I really geek out over the technology, but I love to see people like I, you know, take advantage of the technology and see how they, how they use it. Um, so uh, photo setup, uh, you have lots of different capabilities here. You can have different setups uh, for each of your years. You can decide to show or hide your photos. So that might be useful, like if you're in the process of uploading your photos and you don't want anybody to see them yet, you can hide the photos. And then when you're ready, you can, you can show them and stuff like that. You can allow searching um, by participant data. Um, you can hide the social search bar. You can decide what order you want, the, want them to uh, display in. You can allow or not allow participant uploads. You can allow for public tagging, uh, which is kind of a lost and found. So like if somebody sees a picture of Steven, they can mark it, you know, Steven Sigwart, and all of a sudden that photo gets tagged for, for him. Um, you can require approval for photo uploads. So uh, this might be something you want to do if you don't necessarily trust the people that are uploading. <laughs> um, uh, the race director can, uh, can do that. You can automatically apply watermark to race uh, logos. So you can pick, you know, whoever your sponsor is. So uh, we have a built-in sponsor system. So I can, you know, kind of uh, pick any of the sponsor logos that are already up, uh, uploaded uh, as well. Um, uploading photos, it's super easy. Um, I'm going to create a, a new album here. I'm going to mark it test and continue. And I will, I think I have some here, my photo demo. I'll just um, upload a bunch of old photos. I was telling people before that I, I went into Google Photos and just um, <clears throat> did some searches 
Um, and I, it was like a little trip down memory lane like that I took yesterday or, or the day before. Um, so I uploaded a bunch of photos. Um, now also on the back end, um, I can look at photos. Now, before we look at the photos I just uploaded, um, let's review that flagged photo. So there's that truck and I can either disapprove it so it disappears forever or I can approve it. And if I went back to that album, you would, you would, see, you would, see, that, um, you would see that there. So anyway, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search um, for the album that I just uploaded. So this is organized by date and then by album. So I'm gonna go back to that 2017 test and I'm gonna filter it. And I uploaded one of those start lines. Um, so again, you know, there's Steven with 1248 and it automatically recognized 1248. Um, and, and that all happened while I was talking. It actually happened faster than I was talking. It's just, um, I, I, I still get blown away by it. Um, here's a, a picture of little Bobby. Um, this was when I was in college, and this is actually Van Cortlandt Park. So those of you who are uh, cross-country nerds um, and those of you who are somewhat older uh, might recognize Mark Belger from uh, Villanova in the background here. He was a very famous half miler. If this had been a half mile race, he would have been way ahead of me, and um, I was in the process of passing him um, in this race. Uh, so. Here's, here's a really old photo of myself and, um, and my roommate. And, um, and again, those, uh, those are marked. Uh, there's the 455, uh, Eddie's old 455. And you can see how blurry the image is, um, and it still picked that up. Um, so not bad. Oops. Well, this is Marlies and me, and it's back at like prom in college. And she refused to wear a bib because it would it would ruin her dress. So there's no bib on that one. And this is uh, back from like uh, 2002 or three. Uh, a bunch of old Bucknell guys ran Reach Beach, which is a 200 mile race. And that's uh, me and my buddy uh, George Buckheit finishing the race together. And what's kind of interesting about this one is we were on Team Four. And I was uh, the twelfth leg on the on the twelve team on the twelve man team, and so it picked up four and it picked up twelve. So it doesn't always do a perfect job of this, but also notice that it picked up nineteen twenty one and it actually picked that up from the logo of Lacus Coffee here. So um, so that's kind of that's kind of weird. So let's go and um, see if we can figure out a way to fix that. Um, so let's go down here and let's do some bib management. So what's one of the cool things that you can do is you can exclude bibs or outside of ranges and you can find frequently used numbers. And there it says two, two uh, photos got tagged with 1912. I just removed those and they're gone. So that 1921 kind of just disappeared and, and, and won't be seen again. Um, so that's, I think an overview of what's on the race side. Um, Allison has a test race that looks a lot better than mine, the cover page. Um, and she, you can see here how she uh, included event photos right into the, uh, the cover of this. Um, and, you know, it looks, looks really slick. Um, so Phil Quinn is uh, Phil Quinn and, and Ryan Snell were the geniuses who uh, developed this software, all this photo stuff we're, we're playing around with here. And uh, Phil just finished deploying this to a test server for uh, nonprofit ticket events. And so I put up a, a crappy little page with a bunch of uh, old photos that I found in Google Photos. And, um, and I built a, a quick little cover page. So uh, we're gonna look at event photos because uh, the first photo here is Phil and that's the guy that actually wrote this software. So, so there's real people behind this that, that do this stuff for you. And uh, I, thought, uh, I thought that would be interesting. And this is from uh, my other daughter, uh, Molly's uh, wedding. Um, so a bunch of uh, nice pictures, uh, nice memories uh, from that. Um, I also uh, created, uh, oh yeah, so 
you know, birthday photos, you know, so it, it's, I, this, this is Molly, this is Allison. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's my grandfather. That's, uh, that's Marlise's dad with Allison back when she was little. That's my father-in-law and Marlise's dad um, when he turned 93. So uh, if we look at the back end for um, tickets, it looks much the same. There's not as many fancy uh, features in the nonprofit ticket platform because there's, you know, the bib stuff doesn't really apply and things like that. But I can upload photos. So if we go to that event photo, maybe I'll add that uh, photo of, uh, where is that photo? I'll add that photo of Marlise and me. And you can see how quickly these photos upload. It's, it's really um, amazing. And, you know, if we go back into uh, uh, this and the um, event photos, um, you'll see uh, there we are. Um, so you can see how nice and quick and easy this is. Um, I really love the participant upload capability. And uh, I think that's all I got. Any questions, Lauren, or anybody else? I believe we are all caught up to speed. If anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, but thank you so much, Bob. That was great. And I think we all enjoyed the little trip down memory lane too. Um, that, this, this picture, this picture I think is about 44 years old. Time flies, man. We're going to have about an eight minute break um, and this room is going, going to continue on with the check-in app session with Crisp at 2.30. So you can stay in here or if you have different priorities, you can join a different session and I will put that link in our chat box with all of the other sessions and the Zoom links that go with that. And if you're going to stay, I'll see you back here at 2.30. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Bye. Bye.